Hi guys, it's Adam here. I'm an orthopaedic surgeon. If you have knee arthritis, you may have heard of a partial knee replacement. And most people, when I mention this to them, are a bit confused as to what this means. And several questions usually come up. What do you mean by a partial knee? Why not just replace the whole thing? What's the advantage of a partial knee replacement over a total knee replacement? And is my knee suitable to have a partial knee replacement? In this video, I'll go through the answers to some of these questions and give you some evidence to help you decide whether a partial knee replacement may be a good option for you. I do hope you find this video helpful and please remember to hit subscribe. As always, this video is for information purposes only and you should speak to your doctor before making a decision about your care. Now, although we think of the knee as a single joint, it actually has three separate parts to it. An inner or medial compartment, which is the one most commonly involved in arthritis, an outer or lateral compartment, and a compartment between the patella or kneecap and the front of the femur, known as the patellofemoral joint. Now each of these can become involved in arthritis, often all at the same time, but sometimes only one compartment is affected by the disease. Here's an x-ray of someone's knee. You can see the two bones, the femur and the tibia, which together form the knee joint. And the reason there's normally a gap between the bones on the x-ray is that that gap contains articular cartilage, which covers the surface of the bones. And you can't see the cartilage on the x-ray. Now in this x-ray, as indicated by the red arrow, you can see that the person's cartilage has worn away on the inside or medial part of the knee, and the gap is reduced. On the outer part of the knee, as shown by the green arrow, there is cartilage remaining. So in this case, some people would say, well, if only one part of the knee is affected by arthritis, it doesn't really make sense to do a total knee replacement. Why don't we just replace the affected part of the knee? This is an example of a total knee replacement, and you can see how the entire end of the femur is covered by metal, as is the top of the tibia, and there's a polyethylene or plastic liner between them. And here is a partial knee. Only half the knee has been resurfaced. And one of the main advantages of a partial knee is that because the less bone is taken away and the incision is smaller, there tends to be a faster recovery with less blood loss and better function because large parts of the knee which are unaffected by arthritis, including the outer compartment, the anterior cruciate ligament and other structures in the knee are left intact. So the kinematics of the knee or the way it behaves biomechanically is more like a normal knee. And this has been shown in lots of studies that partial knee replacements tend to give a more physiological, functional knee. This piece of research published in The Lancet looked at over 100,000 people receiving either total knee replacement or partial knee replacement, and it found that partial knee replacement has half the risk of major medical complications such as stroke, heart attack and blood clots, half the risk of deep infection and a lower risk of death within 90 days of surgery, so some pretty big advantages. However, the same paper also showed that partial knee replacement has a higher risk of revision or redo surgery, often because another compartment in the knee starts to develop arthritis and then it has to be changed to a total knee replacement, which is another major surgery. So this is commonly given as one of the main drawbacks of partial knees. So partial knee replacement seems to be safer and is more likely to give you a better outcome, which makes sense because you're not disrupting the unaffected part of the knee, so it replicates normal physiology more closely. However, overall, there does seem to be a higher risk of revision or redo surgery with partial knee replacement. So how do we reconcile this? Well, an important point to note is that there's a strong correlation between revision rate and the surgeon's volume for partial knees. So if surgeons only do them occasionally, for example, one in 20 of their cases, their revision rate is likely to be much higher than when they perform partial knee replacement regularly, for example, in one in four or one in five cases, where actually the revision rate approaches that of total knee replacement. So if you're thinking about having a partial knee, my biggest piece of advice will be to find out from your surgeon how many partial knee replacements they do. Another point to note is that not everyone is suitable to have a partial knee. Now, depending upon which study you read, it's thought to be between 20% and 40% of people. 
If you have arthritis in more than one part of your knee, you have ligament damage or specific patterns of arthritis or diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis, your surgeon might recommend a total knee replacement. It's not possible to be 100% sure when going into the operation that you are suitable for a partial knee replacement. And when the knee is opened up, the surgeon may find a problem they weren't expecting on the scans in another part of the knee. And in that case, they'll do a total knee replacement instead. Check out some of my other videos on how to prepare for knee replacement surgery, managing arthritis and recovery tips for after the operation, as well as what you can do to reduce your risk of complications.